All right. Ooh, okay, hold on just a second. Sure. Um, I'm going to give my wife because I have short arms to hit this. And so, yeah, no problem. MRC. Hey, MRC. Hey, Sorry about that. Can you hit that record or got it? I don't know where I am. Uh, there we go. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. No worries. <laughs> All right, ready awesome. when you are. Okay, great. Okay, so thank you again for participating in this interview. We're really interested to learn about your experiences um, with XR. And because we're recording, can you first share your name, where you are from, and what you do for a living? Yes, sure. My name is uh, Stuart Tucker Lundy. Uh, and where I'm from is uh, actually, I live in Denver, Colorado, but I'm originally from the East Coast of, uh, of Maryland. Um, so uh, currently I am uh, a producer and director for uh, Listen Productions. Um, it's a full service production company. So uh, yeah, I do, uh, uh, I like making people look good. So that's what I do for a living. So. Cool, love that. And if you're comfortable doing so, um, could you describe yourself for our blind audience? Sure, I am a black male. Uh, I have a shaven uh, head, um, let's see, a graying beard. Uh, I just turned 55 uh, earlier this week, uh, last week. So let's see, uh, um, uh, let's see, guys, I, that's that's an interesting question, and I know a lot of folks that happen to be blind, but I've never had to describe myself. Um, that's pretty much it. Without a lighter skin, black male, as they say sometimes, so there's a difference. <laughs> so that that's uh, uh, I'll get into more detail if uh, just email me and I can describe my best self better. I feel. We're doing that on camera. On sure. narcissists and That's fair. <laughs> okay. And happy um, belated birthday to you as well. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and also, if you feel comfortable sharing, could you give our listeners and viewers a little context about your disability? Sure. Uh, yes, I was uh, 14 years old. And at, the at that time, I took a dive in the lake. Well, I dove in the lake when I was 14 years old. I rendered me C4, C5 uh, quadriplegic, and that was almost 41, 40 some odd years ago. Uh, like I said, I'm 55 now, I've been in the wheelchair for 41 some odd years. Um, gosh, uh, I'd like to say that's the day that my life trained, changed dramat dramatically as far as uh, the way I look at things, the way that things are. Um, I look at it as a a uh, blessing and also just very fortunate because uh, it uh, put me in a, a world of uh, that I probably wouldn't have known before. So I look at it as uh, some people get a trip to France to uh, to in, take a, to take a another culture in. Um, I took a, to a trip to a lake uh, to to get into this culture. So uh, I I I I, I want to I without being too facetious, I want to say I love it because it's one of those type of cultures where you experience and you meet a lot of different people. And uh, I'm, a part, I'm a very proud to be a part of this culture and uh, this community also. Yeah, and if you could um, build on that, I'm wondering if you could also walk through a typical day of living um, with your disability. Sure, um, uh, basically, uh, I'm married, uh, so my wife and I, we uh, get up in the morning and uh, pretty much she calls it her, her coffee shop of, uh, if you will, as far as uh, uh, in the morning where we're getting ourselves together. So we get it, we, we get up in the morning with one another. Uh, after that, you know, she helps me in the chair. Oh goodness, after that, uh, basically I'm on the go after that. I'm in the chair, she does her thing, I do my thing. Um, she has a, uh, a, a 303 face and body brand as she does. Uh, um, and uh, I produce and uh, uh, basically a lot of research for me. Um, and then uh, basically just ideas, ideas are just coming, coming ideas. And uh, so it's basically uh, 
uh, afternoon of just trying to uh, consolidate and coordinate ideas and trying to figure out how you're going to make projects work. So, okay, yeah, that's really interesting. Back to bed. <laughs> Yeah, and um, I imagine we'll kind of unpack that later as it's relevant to your work when we talk about XR. Um, you also mentioned that you're really proud to be part of this culture, as you said it. Um, can yeah. you explain that um, thought a little bit more for us? Yeah, you know, sometimes people think that, uh, you know, you, 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 you'll you see on a, uh, some of these uh uh, TV lawyer commercials, and and I, I maybe it's because I've been in a wheelchair for so long, but uh, they'll say I I was in a uh, accident and I was in a wheelchair for three weeks, and I often scoff at the TV and go, and the problem with that is, you know, so <laughs> um, uh, but I am proud of it because I, I I you know like I said I'm 55 years old and uh, I've seen a lot of folks that weren't represented at one time. Um, you see a lot of people that are, or I mean, a whole group of people, I should say, that were never represented. Um, uh, I, my company and myself, we just finished doing a uh, Jansport commercial, uh, producing it, and our principal lead and characters were uh, folks with disabilities, and it was for an accessible bag. Um, I produced that myself, and uh, so that's important, because when I was in that same age, about uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, I never saw a person of color or a person of uh, uh, a person in a wheelchair until I was probably about in my mid thirties or so. Uh, so seeing it now and having a technology around is very important to this culture because it advances it, it highlights it. It uh, shows people that, um, you know, <laughs> Uh, you can join this uh, community at any given time. So, you know, it's not one of those situations where people have a tendency to look at it as a, a NIMBY thing or not in my backyard, or it can never happen to me, you know, that, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm one of those people that uh, embraces it as a culture because, uh, I mean, you have folks that are in the blind community, you have people that are in the neurodiverse community, you have people that are quads, paras, and somehow we fit together but there are different cliques they have different things that you can say or i can say that a choir can't say this to a para and that kind of thing so i, I like i said i look at it as a culture and like i said i'm very very proud of what is going on now as far as uh the record people recognizing the fact that your son or my daughter or, or whomever can be in a wheelchair for the matter have a disability in their life. So it makes it a lot easier for people to redefine what is normal. But I guess that that is ultimately the goal, redefining what's normal. Yeah, great. That's a great statement. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> um, I, will we be able to see that Jamsport um, work that yeah. you did? Mm -hmm. You can, uh, I'll send it to you, or if I forget, uh, uh, just go to Jansport uh, Accessibility Bag, and uh, that's the one we shot out in Littleton here in oh. Colorado. No, you said Littleton. No, I'm, no you said Love, uh, Love It. It was uh, Lakewood, yes. It was oh, fantastic. Okay. Lakewood, awesome. yes. <laughs> cool. Yeah, fantastic. Day. All right. Okay, well, you also mentioned just briefly a little bit about technology, and so maybe that's a good way to kind of segue into your experiences with XR. Um, and so I'm wondering if you could tell me about a time when you experienced XR and what that was like for you. Yeah, um, the I had bought a pair of uh, uh, headsets. Um, gosh, I can't remember it's been that long now oh it was uh, oculus oculus headsets and uh i'm had my wife put them on me and uh it was i the game that i got was i think it was free fall or skyfall and I, i'm a little bit of a uh what is it? uh i'm a little bit of a daredevil and so um or at least i was at one time nowadays i'm kind of like Oh, I'm a little bit too old for that. I might, <laughs> I might break a hip or something. So, uh, but uh, the first game was uh, 
jumping out of a plane on a wingsuit out of the sim was. And that experience for the first time, we're looking around and having a full uh, 180 or 360 degree angle. It was so fantastic. And then to look down and to know that normally I would look down into my lap, but looking down at my feet or looking down uh, at the bottom of the wingsuit and then taking that literal uh, leap of faith and you're leaping and you're going out and it just had, you can hear the wind going through your ears and everything else. I've uh, done pl sail planing as far as the Indian glider before. And that was probably, probably one of the most adrenaline filled uh, excursions I've ever had. I had to place this to a, uh, a good second or third uh, with it because, uh, wow, wow, I got addicted to it. Uh, so eventually I'm going to get another pair of Oculus and things like that. But uh, I'm, I see the potential for a lot of, uh, of different uh, applications for it. that with that particular one. And then also having fun with it, studying, uh, uh, watching different uh, uh, documentaries, things like that in a immersive world. And it, uh, it helps. And I found myself using it for different practices. Uh, uh, for me, sometimes I get uh, down just like everybody else does. And, you know, and uh, especially in the wintertime here in Colorado, uh, not able to go out, things like that. So I would use it just to, for escape, a couple of minutes in the headsets. And I wasn't here in gloomy Colorado where the sidewalks are cluttered and with snow and things like that. I was on the beaches of Maui, you know, that kind of thing. So it's fantastic. I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, and you said the first headset, you, um, you mentioned that your wife put the headset on you. Are there like, how were you, how did you become interested in this kind of technology? What sort of draw, drew you to this? Well, I've always been one of those people that um, have been interested. I'm a, I'm a geek. I'm a nerd. I love, uh, uh, for my, when I was walking for one of my first birthdays, uh, I received a, uh, uh, a radio player or a record player. Uh, I had it for about maybe a week and a half and I took it apart. And so put it back together again. And I took it apart again as then and, and I would just tinker with things all the time. So by nature, I'm always one of those people who loves gadgets. I love uh, Professor X, I'm that guy. So uh, when this technology first came along uh, back a long time ago, and I'm really getting ready to show my age with popular science magazines and uh, things like that, um, you would see these average or for that matter, the technology, but the headsets were so, um, so, you know, things get smaller as technology does and, and superconductor kicked in and things get faster and smaller and smaller and more affordable. So once they hit a slightly affordable price for me, uh, you know, I said, well, I'm going to get some, but uh, the, the interest has always been there is technology. I think that technology like I said earlier, is a is a is a very very essential part of uh, uh, folks in wheelchairs. I have right now a phone that probably has more computing uh, processing power, and also um, uh, you know to the point where you can actually uh, you know have a lot of computing power. Can I have a mark, uh, Anna? Because I just messed up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> can I take a beat and a mark? Because I said computer and this thing over here. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> sorry. That's fine. We'll edit that out. <laughs> totally threw me off. I was like, damn it. I was doing really well. Uh, okay, what was my mark from my computer? Okay, let's see. All right, I was trying to retrace my thought to give you a good mark. Sure. So you were, I think okay. you were talking about your phone and just like how oh. there's so much with it in your yes. phone. Thank you so much. Oh, yes. So, yes, I have a, uh, a, uh, a telephone that has probably more uh, CPU uh, power than uh, uh, the, the, the devices we use at school because, um, uh, you know, just with the modern technology, I mean, you can ask your phone to do anything. If I often tell people, if you're ignorant in the 21st century or 2000, 23 is because you want to be, because you can ask your phone anything. 
and it probably has the right answer, probably better than you do. Um, so yeah, I'm one of those people that embraces that technology because it allows me to read books. It allows me to uh, basically, nowadays I can take notes. Um, at one time I had, when I was in high school, uh, this is before a lot of the, the technology we have now, I had to have somebody take notes for me. And uh, then with carbon paper, <laughs> which probably kids, if you look up carbon paper in the Dixons, <laughs> it was a thing that we used basically to basically take a copy of, uh, of the person's notes. So you had to decipher that person's notes and things like that. So, uh, you know, so school was fun, but it was, it, I would probably be more engaged, uh, would have been more engaged if I had the tools, the right tools to help me at the time. So it became, you know, now as a 55 year old man, I cannot stop with the information, with the uh, different technologies and different things like that and, and learning. It helps the learning uh, curve a lot better, so. Yeah, carbon paper, I, uh, <laughs> it does take me back a little bit. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> things have certainly changed. <laughs> Um, yes. So are there other um, XR technologies that you've either found yourself using or um, are interested in using and wanting to learn more about? Uh, and I know that's kind of vague, but it, it's uh, especially the uh, technology that allows individuals to uh, see one another or augmented reality uh where the person is in the room or what have you because uh i found myself you know with some of my friends who happen to be deaf or hearing impaired um you know i often want to have conversations with them and i can't because i can't use my hands and uh i'm currently i'm learning spanish but you know i thought to myself you know i want to be able to communicate with my friends who you know I mean, I have a uh, phone with me at a time or something like that, but just communicate with them with just on their on their terms, what have you. So uh, XR, uh, LiDAR, uh, things like that. We've used LiDAR. I sit on a, a 16th Street uh, Champions, which is a, uh, we're re basically reconstructing the mall here. And so they ask a lot of our input and why input on different phases of the mall, but they're using a thing called LiDAR. And where they're looking into the ground and seeing how deep and how uh, deep we should go into the ground, things like that. So with that technology, you know, I I find it fascinating, just fascinating that we can do these things now. So, uh, you know, and even with the technology here I have in the home, earlier I had a little bit of a mess up with uh, uh, my digital assistant. I won't say his or her name because uh, it activates it. Uh, but I can literally run the whole house uh, with my voice, turning on television, uh, lights, uh, the uh, blinds, things like that. So, uh, you know, at one time you, you literally had to wait around for somebody to come and do these things for you. So it also with that brings you more independence also because now you don't, you're not beholden upon one just person to just come in and to do things. You can do it yourself, which is opening your mouth. So it's, it's come a long way. Yeah, absolutely. And you, uh, hit on some of like the affordances and strengths of these different kinds of technologies that you've highlighted. I'm wondering if you have also run into challenges or things that you wish could be better um, with some of these XR technologies, especially regarding um, accessibility. Yeah, um, the reason that and I didn't go any further with the Oculus is because it had a hand control. Um, I'm a C4, C5 with limited use of my hands. And so I can't grasp or uh, things like that. I just use a stylus on my left hand. Uh, and um, But the, I found the limitation there. Uh, there was, you can use your head to bobble back and forth and to sight, things like that. But, um, you know, having that control because... Uh, I'm a big, big, big F1 fan and F1 racing fan. And so to have seen simulations where, you know, uh, with the hardware, the way that it's designed now for 
able-bodied individuals, you know, they have a, a fantastic time driving Lewis Hamilton's car, which makes me so envious. So, but I would love to have that where, you know, I'm just as confident and fast as a, a person that's able-bodied, but it's just technology that allows me to drive the car, something simple. So, uh, so yeah, some areas, a lot of areas that uh, either the designers or other game or products or what have you just probably need to think a little bit differently as far as how we design it going forward. Uh, we're designing it for multiple individuals, not individuals who just have fingers. So you have people who have uh, limb differences where they don't have limbs at all um, or it's no, it's no sight at all. So, you know, I, I would, if, if anything, uh, for anybody's hearing this and you're a designer or a, uh, a engineer, design something, step up your game. It's the 20th century. So come on. <laughs> Yeah, and you know the last questions I have to ask you are about your vision for XR in the future, and you've absolutely touched on some of those things in terms of design. Um, I'm wondering if you have other thoughts about what could improve certain features, and you've you've definitely hit on that. And I would welcome you know anything, any other thoughts you have, and even like if you had a magic wand, um, what what would you change or do differently? Oh gosh, um, I think it would just be going back to uh, all things being equal. Uh, a lot of designers that love uh, Call of Duty, uh, all the things that you love as, as, as a designer or a, uh, a person who uh, puts together these programs, uh, you have to know that folks like myself and other folks uh, in similar in the, in, in, within the community, they love the same things. And, and it, it, it helps so much more than you will ever know when you put on a, a pair of headsets or that technology is there. Or for that matter, a person can't help you, but technologies help you. Um, so, and that's been my case for a long time. So if anything, just know that, you know, you're not designing it for just an able-bodied person. There's no, no know that you're designing it for everyone and then then you know take some self-reflection and say to yourself okay who is everyone uh like to say sometimes just google it as i said earlier ask ask your personal assistant and she or he will tell you what we need so i think that and then also you know i'm being a little facetious but you know engaging with the community that um would benefit from it so engaging uh, very intensely with the that community, with any community that it has a need. I think that uh, would be, I would think, outside of the Hippocratic Oath, I think that should be an oath for engineers and designers. Engage with, engage with your community. So, yes. And how would you um, like to experience XR in the future? Oh, gosh. Uh, I... Gosh, and I, I, I'm one of those people. I just want, I want to try everything. I, I maybe I just got to 55, and I'm like, oh, I just went crazy, what have you. Um, for me, I guess so many different ways. I mean, I, I was just on a website uh, the other day, no, just a few weeks ago, and they were showing a a treadmill for paraplegics so they can work out on their wheelchairs, with their wheelchairs. And there's so many different applications with the treadmill uh, and also using VR, uh, things like that. So uh, the possibilities are endless. The way I like to see it being used is to uh, to basically, as, as a simulator, because there's situations that had I known before I got to a certain situations, uh, venues, uh, uh, planes, things like that, and I had the heads up, I could say, okay, I know what I'm dealing with. And, you know, that's not a problem to pivot. I think most people who are in wheelchairs are, are great planners and also great adapters. But, uh, you know, every so often something will come up. But uh, I think being, having used as a simulator and also to, uh, to create empathy, because there's only so much that I can tell you as an able-bodied person 
oh, this is like, or what this is like. There's different programs that I've read that uh, you can look into someone's face and see what exactly they are going through and everything. So I think it has so many different applications from augmented to LIDAR to virtual to from everything. So the, I seem to saying one way, uh, it, the possibilities are so endless. They really are. Okay, and last question. Um, is there anything else that you'd like us to know about that we haven't talked about before we conclude the interview today? Oh, gosh. Um, I think that, uh, you know, the more that we normalize certain things, like, you know, I think that um, uh, a lot of times we have a tendency to make it that third scary rail, rail if you will, as far as, or well, we don't want to go in that particular area, or I don't really know. Uh, I, I've been in a, a, a seminars where uh, actually Series Fest is coming up. It's a, a, a film festival. And I was at one a couple of years ago, and uh, one of the people said, uh, well, I, I need a, I need a, I have a role for a gentleman in a wheelchair, but I don't know where to get a guy in a wheelchair. And to me, you would think that's the most simplest thing in the world, but, and, and you're a casting agent also. So to I say all that, to say that um, I, I, I just want to have it normalized where that producer in the same situation as a person that's an engineer or designer says, okay, well, I have an individual with this X need and that need, uh, can we do it? And it's right there. Yes, you have a community of it. So. I think going forward, I think it's more, more or less just opening up your mind, uh, just saying this could be me. Or, and like I said, look at it, look at, at it as a challenge, um, because like I said, these problems aren't going away. And when I say problems, the problem of inclusion, we talk that all the time and we use it as a catchword. And actually it's starting to be a catchword because we uh, have inclusive this, inclusive that. But. I don't see it show up where it should be showing up. I think it's more of a fun word we like to use right now. So, so let's put it back to where it needs to be. Let's 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 honestly make it inclusive. So instead of uh, uh, ostracizing folks, because sometimes that's what they feel like when they can't use particular products, things like that. Okay, I think that's a great note to end on. Um, thank you so much. I'm going to uh, stop recording here.